Hey guys, today we're going to solve leak on number 1356, sort integers by the number of 1 bits. So we're given an array R and we have to sort it by the number of 1 digits in their binary representation. And if they have the same amount of 1s in their binary representation, then we need to sort them in ascending order. And yeah, just to return the sorted array. So the first part of this problem is actually doing the framework of this problem. So telling our function that we're going to have to sort an array based on the number of ones. And then we're going to have to do a function that given a number spits out the number of ones in that number, right? So first of all, the first part, we want to have a sorting, which takes the two candidates. And so you know how when you want to just sort them ascendingly, you just do A minus B. Well, in this case, we want to sort them based on the binary representation on the amount of ones in their binary representation. So instead, we're going to take the amount of ones in the first number and subtract the amount of nums in the second number. And you can look into how the sorting callback works if you want to understand why you need to do this to have an ascending ordering. And then if this is zero, meaning that they have the same amount of one bits, then we want to sort them ascendingly. So we just do or, meaning that if this is zero, then this gets evaluated, right? And then we just pass in the common, like this is how you would usually do the sorting if you just wanted a ascending sort, right? So now all that's left is to implement the num bytes, the num bits function, which is going to have to calculate how many ones we have in the binary representation. And so to do that, we're going to create a new function here and we're going to implement this recursively. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the first bit, like the least signifying bit of the current number. So the way to do that is like this. So this is just taking the first bit, the least signifying bit out of our number. And then what we do is we add to this the number of bits in all of the remaining bits. So how do we discard the first bit? We just shift the number to the right, like this, right? So we shift our number to the right, and then we call our function again. And you can see that this is a recursive function, so we're going to have to put a base case somewhere, and we could do something like, if number is zero, then return zero, and that would be a valid base case. But instead we can take advantage of the recursive nature here and instead write a dynamic programming approach for this function. So you see that we have overlapping subproblems because you're going to oftentimes call this numbits function on a number that you've already called it on. So we only want to do the calculation once and because remember that taking the number of one bits in a number takes O of log of that number. So we only want to do it once, and all of the other times we just want to return a memoized result. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to build a memo, which also has our base case inside of it, right? And then what we do is we just check if the current parameter is in the memo, and if it is, we return that memo. Else we just assign to the memo the return expression. So yeah, we just check if the num key is in the memo, so it's, the result is not undefined. And if it is, then we return memo of num. And else, we return, we return the same expression, but before returning it, we just assign it to the memo of the proper key, right? So yeah, in these three simple steps, we've built the dynamic programming approach. And so that also gives us the base case automatically. So yeah, I'm going to show you that this works. And that's it from me today. Thank you for watching and bye.